buy nice or buy twice. But like you're probably going to buy twice anyways, right? What's up? My name is Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I mainly shoot portraits, events, weddings, anything where there's a person I'm probably going to want to photograph it. I wanted to talk today about the idea of buying cheap camera gear and why sometimes it's actually the right choice. This is a tricky one. I feel like I really want to thread the needle here between the idea of just like blatant consumerism and like being frugal and all of that kind of weird elements of things. But I do think there's something really important about the place of cheaper or used camera gear within what we do. Something really pernicious within the camera and photography world is the idea of like constantly you need to upgrade your kit constantly wanting the new and best thing. I don't I don't think that that's necessary and I don't really want to get into that because it's it's so expensive to like be a creator or a photographer or something and feeling like you need to upgrade all the time just to get like marginal benefits out of this new gear. But I do think if you're somebody who's new and who's starting out, you're probably just like so confused about where you should start what you should get, should I be getting, you know, the best gear or should I be getting used gear? What, what should I do? And so this video is for anybody within that world. There's a bunch of common sayings about this idea, right? Buy nice or buy twice, date your camera bodies, but buy your lenses. Uh, what, what else? It's cheaper to be rich. Buy the best you can afford. Chris, you only need so many vintage Minolta 50 millimeter lenses. Okay, that one's maybe not as common to everybody. But the point is there's plenty of reasons to buy good quality gear, to buy things that will stand up to the test of time. Bombproof tripods or high quality pro level glass will improve your workflow. It will last you for years to come, no doubt. In a world of single use plastic and fast fashion and crazy rampant materialism, it feels kind of indefensible to be talking about buying cheap stuff. And, and that's not what I'm doing. I'm not talking about buying the cheapest shit you can find on Amazon and, and just throwing it out when you're done with it. What I'm talking about is the fact that maybe there is a place for lower quality gear within your workflow, especially when you're starting. My main argument for cheap camera gear is this. When you're new, you don't know what you need. You might think you need all F 1.4 glass, but maybe you don't. You might think that the holy trinity of lenses of the like zooms of that like 16 to 35, the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200, you might think that's everything you need, but it might not be. You know, it might be perfect for your workflow, terrible for mine or vice versa. And until you've spent enough time doing the actual act of photography and figuring out what you wanna shoot, buying really expensive gear for certain niches or genres or whatever is just going to be a very expensive endeavor that's maybe not going to get you where you think it's going to get you. You might end up with a lot of expensive gear that you have no use for that sits on a shelf. Some of it is going to hold its value and you can resell, but a lot of it won't. I mean, think of how many camera bags and camera backpacks you've owned if you've been at this for a while. Probably quite a few. And that's because each time you're hoping it's going to like improve on this thing that's frustrating you. But you wouldn't know what those frustrations were until you started using it. Or, or here's a good one. Videographers out there, do you own a map box? I own a map box. How many times have you used that map box? For you, it might be every single day, but for a lot of people, it is very rare. And there's this joke of like, you put it on there. So you're seen as somebody who, you know, can be taken seriously, but but you don't actually need it. So like knowing what I know now about what I need out of a backpack, I'm really glad I didn't purchase like a $500 backpack because those exist and that I went with like, you know, a couple of different cheaper options over time and I figured out what I actually needed out of a backpack so that I could make a more informed decision later. I'm also really glad that I purchased a $60 tilted mini map box off of Facebook Marketplace rather than buying like a $300 map box option that I was looking at. Save myself a grip of money and I still have something I can use when I need it. Some gear is dangerous to buy cheap. For example, I have a C-stand right here beside me. It is holding up a pretty big light right over my head. If this was a $20 C-stand, I'd be pretty nervous about what would happen. I would not put this above my head. If you have talent that you're working with and you throw something over their head on a cheap C-stand or a tripod or whatever, dangerous, don't do that. But more and more, I find myself refining my kit based on use case and based on repeated use case. So if I have like a one-off reason to own something, that's not a great investment for me. 
I feel so much more confident in purchasing things now, knowing what I do day to day and week to week. And as seasons change and I start to pick up new things in my photography career, I will probably augment that kit. However, I would say that like the core staples now, I know, okay, I definitely want these types of lenses, this type of camera. You know, it's really great for me to have like this kind of battery pack. It's good for me. I'm just looking around at all the shit I'm using right now. Monitors, all that kind of stuff. I know what I need for my workflow as it stands and where I am projecting for my workflow to go in the immediate to near to mid future. So maybe it's okay to buy cheap gear, used gear, lower quality gear until you figured out exactly what you need. Maybe that's going to save you money. Maybe that's going to be helpful, but I can already hear people saying, well, why not just rent? Fair. Totally fair. Renting is great. I'm a big advocate for renting. However, there are a few things about renting that are pretty tricky. And I think it's unfair to just assume that renting is the best option for people all the time when they're in the scenario of trying to figure out what gear they want. And here's the things that I think are tough about it. Firstly, renting gear is expensive. If I have a specific job I need a piece of gear for, I can work that into the budget. If I want to test out a piece of gear because I'm thinking about buying it, totally fair. That That's a great option. But for some people and, and some genres of photography, let's say you're brand new and you're like, I really want to get into landscape photography. It might take you three to six months of working with a piece of gear or with working with that type of shooting to know what you need. And there's no way you could rent it for that long and make it cost effective unless it's a extremely expensive lens that you're renting. But even then the rental cost is going to be very high. So it doesn't really work out in that scenario. Certainly renting can be ideal, but there's certain times where it just won't work out. Another added sort of complexity of renting gear is you have to live somewhere where you can rent gear. Sure, you can rent stuff online and have it shipped to you and stuff like that, but it can be very hard to actually get gear in your hands if you live in like small town, rural, you know, I'm thinking of like for me, I live in a little town in Ontario. I'm not far from Toronto, so I can drive, you know, an hour and a half into Toronto to rent a piece of gear, uh, but I do have to factor in time and cost of my time and cost of gas and all that stuff. And then if I'm using that for anything uh, that is going to be like paid work, maybe it's going to be paid for, but if it's for personal work, it's not. Uh, do I have to have insurance for it? All this different stuff. And so it can actually become kind of an expensive endeavor to rent gear and to rent it. If you don't live somewhere close to there, you just can't get access to it. So. Renting is just not always an option for somebody. Okay, and the third thing about renting, and this is sort of mixed in with a lot of the other points here, which is that I've found that a lot of the cheaper gear that I wanna try out is just not something you can rent. You know, if you wanna rent a budget-friendly lens, a lot of those just aren't available to rent because the company just wouldn't make enough money off of it by renting it out. Like, it doesn't make sense for a rental house to have like a $150 lens you know, because they could rent it out for what, like, I don't know, 10 bucks a day or something like that. And, and no one's going to rent it. People are renting more expensive gear, pro glass, pro bodies, niche products, stuff that they need that's more specific. So if I have like a cheaper piece of gear I want to try out, let's say there's like a fun looking lens that I'm curious about and I want to explore it, but I don't know if I'm going to love it or not. Uh, my first thing is I jump onto Facebook Marketplace. I see if I can find it used. I see if I can find like a good deal on it. Let's say I can do that. That's awesome. Or maybe I have to buy it new, but it's not super expensive. I can usually go and resell that. And so if I bought it used, a lot of times I can resell it for more or less the price that I got it for. If I buy it new, yeah, I'm going to take a hit on it, but it's still far cheaper than it would have been to try and source renting it or renting a higher quality version of it uh, that in the end, maybe I would or would not want. So I just, I think there's room for rentals, but I don't think it solves every problem every time. So just to round this out, what's some of the budget gear that I've purchased that has either stuck around or has helped inform my opinion moving forward that I'm really glad that I purchased instead of spending a lot of extra money on the higher quality version. First one right away is going to be a controversial one and that's a tripod. Now, I do think there is a very good reason to buy a super high quality tripod. If you buy a great tripod, you could have that for so, 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 so long, but you might not know what you need out of a tripod. 
What I thought I needed in a tripod at the very beginning is very different than what I actually use a tripod for now. Like when I first started, I was doing a lot of real estate photography. And so what I needed of a tripod then versus now when I do all this talking head stuff, all this YouTube stuff is, is just different. I didn't ha have to worry about having a tripod that could be at my eye level all the time so I could film myself because I was doing real estate stuff. If I had bought just for that niche and I paid a lot of money for like a tripod that only goes up to 54 inches, I would have been kind of hooped. And so I'm glad that I bought a, I didn't buy like a cheap, cheap tripod, but I bought a more budget friendly tripod, which I still use all the time today for that work. And then as time went on, I ended up picking up a higher quality, still used Manfrotto tripod that I can use uh, to film me doing talking head stuff when I am standing and stuff like that. So I'm glad I bought a more budget friendly option until I figured out what I needed it for and what kind of like, did I want like, you know, a video head tripod? Did I want photography? All that kind of stuff. I wouldn't have known at the beginning. And so if I had spent five or $700 on a really, really high quality tripod, I may have just sort of regretted that and just felt like I was hamstrung by the constraints of it as time went on. Number two is soft boxes. At the beginning, when you're starting to work with lighting and soft boxes and stuff like that, you probably just don't know what you need, right? Like I'm always experimenting with lighting. You've probably seen that on this you know, channel. I'm always trying new things, stuff. Right now we're using this fun kind of top down solution here. I know it's creating some like raccoon eyes and stuff, but I just wanted to see what a more like dramatic style would look like. Uh, but I don't think you always know what you need out of like diffusion and lighting and you just don't have a good handle on all that stuff. So. Now, when I'm doing my portrait work, I have evolved a little bit in terms of what I do, but I started with just a single light and softbox. It was like a, a cheap, newer, like I think probably like a 32 in, no, not even that, like a 24 inch softbox, octobox thing. And it was cheap and it worked and it got me some nice portraits and it got me more comfortable. Now I've slowly evolved and upgraded to get into, you know, using different types of lighting and stuff like that. Uh, speaking of lighting, I do get it. This is dark and dramatic and heavy and not my normal thing, but I thought it'd be fun to try something different. Um, maybe I should throw some fill underneath here to kind of bring up these shadows and stuff, but whatever, it's, it's fun. And I think this will be a fun thing to grade. So we'll see. Number three, and I alluded to this before, is backpacks. Like, <laughs> man, camera backpacks suck. All of them suck. I know there's great ones and even they suck. I don't know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with them. They're very helpful for certain things, but like choosing between having like a hard shell, like the like pro tactic ones from low pro, or do you want to have like a roll top ones like the wandered, or do you want to have like the Peter McKinnon cool one, or do you want to have like the peak design? There's just so many options. And I think until you've tried a bunch of different ones, like you might think you need one thing and end up with something totally different. If style's getting in the way, if you know, perception's getting in the way, like, what might be best for you is one of those big, like Shimoda, like goofy backpacking backpacks for cameras, but you don't want to look that way. So then you're buying something. I don't know. I just, I think that world is very confusing and I'm glad that I have generally just sort of like played around with different little things. The only things that have really stuck, I would say that the latest backpack I have, the Wandered Provoke 21 liter is, is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I think for most things, I do feel like I wish the camera cube was a bit bigger. I probably, I probably should have gone for a larger one, but, um, but it works for most of the things I do most of the time. And then the peak design, um, sling, the 10 liter is, is good. I don't, I don't love the form factor. The ergonomics I think are not hundred percent, but it's like the perfect size for most of what I do. And so I'm glad I spent the money on that when I did. Last thing I'm glad that I saved money on is a camera monitor. Camera monitors, I think can be, uh, you can spend a ton of money on those. The question that I kept asking myself was like, do I want to be able to do external recording? And when I bought the one that I did, which is the OC T5 plus, I'm using it right now. I felt pretty confident that I didn't want to do any external recording. If I wanted to do external recording, I would have to jump up to like spending, you know, five, six, $700. Also all the prices I'm talking about right now are like Canadian. So maybe it's like half that for you where you live or five times. I don't know. Anyways. I am glad that I bought the one I did because it does everything I need to um, for now. However, I would like to start getting into doing external recording. So if I had bought like one of the more expensive monitors in the beginning that didn't do external recording because I thought I would never use it, I would have spent three or $400 on just like a really good quality field monitor that didn't have external recording. And then now I would have to think about, okay, I want to buy something with external recording. I've already spent like 
four or $500 on this external monitor. I want to buy another one. And that one's also going to be five, $700. So I spent like 12, $1,300 maybe on two different monitors, as opposed to now I spent a hundred bucks on this monitor. It's doing everything I've needed to do up to now. And I know that moving forward, if I invest in a monitor, I want one with external recording. I want one with some of the other bells and whistles, and I'll feel more confident in spending that money. So I hope that makes sense. I'm wondering what you like to use, what you think is a good quality purchase for you when it comes to like that balance of um, quality gear, cheap gear, price, usability, all that kind of stuff. What's some stuff that you've bought that you're really glad you didn't spend a ton of extra money on because you didn't use it, that kind of stuff. Let me know in the comments. Um, and uh, thank you so much to everyone who's been following along. I've been getting a lot of really kind, generous comments as well as some very, you know, critical, some very constructive criticism, some kind of janky and shitty. And that's how this works. And I appreciate all of it because frankly, like I didn't put myself out here for no reason. So thank you for following along. Anyone who's new to this uh, channel, it, I, I don't know how to express how cool it is to see people resonating with what I'm doing. And I know that there's a long way for this to go. I want to be able to put more time and effort into this. So the more people that jump on board and, and help me out with that, the better. And, and thank you. And, and I appreciate you. So, um, yeah, y'all real ones. Thanks. Peace.